there's an exciting new personal watercraft making waves in the world of liquid fun. It's called the wet bike. Floating partially submerged in the water, the wet bike leaps to the surface with a twist of the throttle. All right, guys, some of you seen these before and some of you I'm sure have not, but this is gonna be a will it run video on this late 80s wet bike, I believe made by Wetco or Arctic Cat. This is a 60 horsepower model. It's got a two cylinder Suzuki two stroke. It's a 800 CC. And so this one's been sitting, I'm told, since the mid 90s. Its last sticker was 96. So probably at least 20 years or so. Uh, I'll give you just a quick tour of it. I mean, it's been sitting in a shed and let's see what the, I didn't even look at anything on this. The guy said a hundred bucks and see in the marketplace. I'm like, all right, can't go wrong with that. Uh, but he said it's all complete. Oh yeah, beautiful. So it looks like some things have been living in here for sure. Um, carburetors are a little junked up. <laughs> let's not get too excited now. Let's see what the fuel smells like. Um, okay, yeah, that smells bad. So the problem is you can't really get parts for these anymore. They were made from 70, uh, 78 to 92, and they were actually uh, in 1977 in the, the James Bond movie from what I heard. I'll have to look up that clip still, but it's got this, this fiberglass heavy-duty ski, and it's basically a cross between a jet ski and a motorcycle. Here's a look at the big old jet drive on it, and a unique thing about these is they can still steer on deceleration unlike a standard jet ski. This thing locks into the ribs of my bed liner perfectly. It's like meant to be. Hey, gonna put a plank on here. These darn fins are grabbing the ladder of that. I should at least clean the mud out so that don't freeze up on it. Oh man, there's roots all in here. Eight months later, finally ready to tear into this wet bike, see if there's any life left in there. I haven't checked anything, like motor could be locked up, but you know, it's, uh, I'm sure, sure we can get her going. So, use the old shower curtain to cover up, and uh, yeah, looks just like it did eight months ago. Let's be honest, this is not looking too promising, but I'm gonna give it a good effort. Luckily, I'm somewhat familiar with this engine now since I got the Jetstar. Oh yeah, motor turns over. Well, it's not locked anyway, so we'll pull the plugs out, get those lubed, and rotate that some more. Kind of a great time to tear into the wet bike because I'm getting ready to sell this one that we did a video on. I don't know if that's posted yet. It's not posted yet, but uh, I do have plenty of parts available on this super clean engine, which is identical. Heck, I might as well just pop those carbs off and throw them on the wet bike, right? Another quick check before we dive in is the gearbox oil. I should definitely check this. Uh, you know, switches from vertical to horizontal. So I didn't even know or think about the fact that the Jetstar had, probably has something like this. Oh, all right, there we go. Very nice. It's, uh, well, let me get you guys totally up to level on the check. Yeah, nice red hypoid. And on the fill at the bottom, hopefully we got no water. Usually that water will always settle down. Yep, no water at all. Nice, clean oil. Bilge area down here has just got like five inches of sludge and crud. I mean, there's no, there's no drain on the bottom of this at all. It's just, it does have a bilge pump. 
it smells horrible too. And you can see there was, you know, mice chewing just through all this kind of stuff. Hopefully not the wires. There's a better look for you. It's literally like eight inches. And as I tear it, it smells like a just rat infested swamp. So nasty, like that side I didn't touch yet. And if I poke that with a screwdriver, yeah, it's about, I don't know, five inches. After I get the, all that crud out, this will be kind of probably a hundred pounds lighter. Boom, seen better days on the starboard. I mean, it's just eaten out by some kind of insects or something. Made the homes in there. Ended up going ham on the foam, ripping it all out because half it was waterlogged anyway. And look how much better the access is now. We'll just have to make sure we get that bilge pump working. So in case this gets a crack or starts taking on water heavy, you know, it doesn't sink because that's the purpose of this foam is if you get a crack, you know, it'll still float and you'll be able to recover it. Otherwise, this, this body fills up completely with water and this thing will sink like a brick. I think I'll remove the other side too. I don't know how they expect you to get to anything like the starter motor if you had to replace it. I mean, it's all so tight with this foam in here. I mean, this side's actually still in good shape and not waterlogged, but getting rid of it. There's also a hidden mouse nest that go deep down in behind the foam in here. So, yeah, it's bad news. Potential fire hazard. Got the bilge pump down here. It's a roll. Old school one. I bet you it still works. These things are... Tough as nails. Let's see if I can get it out of there. Yep. Impeller still turns. I bet you any money this pump still works too. These are very good units. I don't know what I would have done if I didn't take the foam out of this. I mean, it would have been impossible to clean under here. It's just so much stuff packed under the motor. It's insane. Maybe give her a bubble bath of the future, but this is a whole lot better. Could definitely work with this. <laughs> Wind up breaking his ears off. I was going to hand rotate it, but we'll just move on to using the starter motor. Pop these plugs out, see what they look like. Shoot some lube in there. Nice. This lower plug, that pulled out of the, the plug end is what happened. See, let me just shoot some lube in the cylinders. Just going to use a screwdriver on the flywheel to rotate it 360 and listen to the cylinders. Ooh, all right, not a good sound. And it rotated all the way around fine. I heard some corrosion on the gear hitting the inside of this aluminum case, then the jet drive down there was making some noise too, but cylinders sounded fine. Let's hook a battery up to it. I assume it must be under this cover. Big old battery in there.
Yeah, that's what I was thinking it was gonna be. Just more mouse nests and foam. Cool, get that all cleaned up. The inside of this tank too. How much fuel is in here? Mm, yeah, it's got a few inches on the bottom at least. You guys probably can't see too well, but we'll get that pumped out. I mean, I tell you, these mice just really wreak havoc on old machines. It's so nasty. Should really be looking at all the wiring before hooking a battery up, but let's just go ahead and hook it up, see if anything smokes, catches on fire. Start with the tap test. No sparks, no clicks. Good to go. Hook up the lanyard. Uh, oh, it's one of those magnetic ones. Okay, that's good. And here's choke. Nothing. Nothing on that. And that's off. Here goes start. Oh! What? <laughs> Listen to that. I'm genuinely shocked because on the... The, the jet stream or the, the jet star 1250 that starter wouldn't go and i had to keep tapping it with a hammer of course that one had like a lot more kind of corrosion uh like rat piss smell which is horrible but no this has really rusted bolts and everything too and well geez starter fired right up let's do a compression check I mean, i'm not that shocked because usually i don't have a problem with starter motors but the jet star had a problem i figured this one definitely would because they're identical the throttle's completely seized so the yeah, plates aren't open but here we go beautiful one 145 same on the bottom cylinder very healthy engine No spark, but does it have another kill switch? No, it's just got the lanyard and off. You know what, we're gonna take this lanyard off real quick, take a look, cause I don't know what kind of magic this magnet does in here and if that's working and it still cranks with it off of there. Mice really chewed this up too. Look at all that. That's a chewed up wire coming out of this box. Yeah, let's try hooking that up together. No spark still. I was able to verify the kill switch is good because I got the other side of this hook to positive and on the switches we have ground in the center which runs over to that. Uh, and a lot of times these kill switches will ground out the coil. That's how they work. So if I plug into the purple wire coming off of it, I am not grounded right now, nothing, but then if I pull the lanyard off, it goes red. I don't know if, if you guys could see that. Uh, so yeah, switch is good. Let's move on to the carburetors for now. Stubby wrench. Let's, there we go. Convenient enough, the fuel line is already broken off, corroded through on this T. If we invest in this one, wouldn't be surprised if they went past the carb too. Oof, these are really, really corroded inside, guys. I might mm, not be able to save these. That, that mouse piss really corrodes stuff, and I'm seeing some heavy, heavy, heavy corrosion. Not good. This throttle cable is locked up throughout too. That's just shot completely. Like, <laughs> broke right in half. What are you seeing there, guys? Anything good? Uh, I can't really see the camera, but maybe reed valves with some corrosion. Uh, yeah, a little bit of corrosion. Let's take a peek inside of here. Give you guys a 360 view real quick with some more detail on the camera. But yeah. These are uh, probably not usable. So let's go ahead and empty this all out. Oh my gosh. Oh, it smells bad too. Wow. Look at that.
Well, look who decided to come in the garage. What are you doing, huh? You usually stay outside the whole time. You never come in here. You come in for the cold floor? Look at all the rust jacking. Oh, that just fell right apart. And try and get these 10 millimeter heads off out of here. Yeah, this is, we're gonna have to use the other carbs, guys. Break some of this corrosion. Oh, oh no. Oh no, guys. Don't think uh, you're gonna be able to save that one. It's, uh, it just completely rotted through, actually on both sides too. That's the problem with aluminum. Once it starts corroding, it just turns back into earth oxide, aluminum oxide. It's done. Done for. Surprisingly able to get the screws off the rusted ones. Well, the, the two better of, of them anyway. Nope. The air fuel needle just came right off of it. Oh my gosh, I guess we should uh, pop these open, see how they look on the inside. Actually not bad at all. It's too bad. Ooh, it's stinky though. It's too bad because the, the ones off the, the Jetstar were so much worse than this. Like the needles were completely seized up and shot. The upper carb, even better. A little bit of water in there, but that's probably from when I was pressure washing it, I would assume. All right, a couple days later, let's get some spark. Get this thing fired up. Um, again, we have the other one for parts. Uh, we, we got this fuse. That's probably just for the charging system, I would assume. We'll check it anyway, though. Look at that. Wetco Industries, made in Japan. The other one's got an Ultranautics uh, tag on it. I guess let's take this whole e-box off of here. Oh, okay. I found some wires chafed and frayed. Behind this box, we got one or two wires chewed completely through. I'm going to pull, pull all this out of here. And with everything else exposed, it seems the only wires that have some chafing and, and are broken are the regulator rectifier wires, which wouldn't really affect spark. Over on the wet bike, everything looks basically identical. Here's that, that plate I was showing you know, on the other one. See, this one says Ultranautics. Uh, but I think I'm just going to fix it the way real mechanics fix it and uh, swap some parts out, you know. Grab this magic box, the CDI box, plug that in to start with. I'm sure it's not a coil, but and, and then we'll worry about taking the flywheel off and seeing how corroded that is on the, uh, the wet bike. I'm sure some of you guys are thinking, why don't you just swap the entire motor instead of the electronics and the carburetors, but then that wouldn't really, you know, it's not the point of a will it run video. We're trying to get this engine running, not that one. Let's blow out that intake corrosion too. Oh, wow. Coming right out of the cylinder. No. That was a poor attempt, so now I'm looking up some schematics and I'm gonna go after the switches up here, make sure that's all working properly, and I don't have to bore you guys with that, so I'll let you know what I find out. 10 minutes later and we got spark. I didn't find any issues with the wiring up in the ignition switch. So then I was like, ah, let me just swap the coil because I noticed it has a little igniter box or something on there too. And sure enough, now we've got a spark. You guys probably can't see it. Let me go just crank with the plugs in. Sounds nice. A little shot of some starting fluid. And restrict the airflow in here. I wouldn't be surprised if the exhaust is all clogged up with mouse nest too, huh? Let's throw the carbs on and see what it does. We got auxiliary fuel. Turn the gas on. Carbs bolted up. We'll choke it and hope for the best. I don't see a place to hook water up to this yet, but on the jet store it was down here. I don't see a location. Shut off 
kind of works. You pull the lanyard, I'll show you guys here. Okay, now it's shutting off, cool. Kill switch doesn't work once it starts revving up like that. It runs. That's yeah. sounded pretty healthy too, actually. Uh, you guys just missed that one. I put the old CDI box in, which it did fire up at first, and then it backfired and shot the whole. There it is. That was so loud. Luckily, I wasn't standing there because that shot up hit here, and whoo! <laughs> we will just stick with the other CDI box. he doesn't kill it right away something going on with that but i think she's ready for the water just gotta hook up some kind of auxiliary tank strap down the battery probably put a bilge pump in would be a good idea you still need a throttle cable probably should have swapped over those card parts on the side since this one's set up for a boat cable and there's another backfire <laughs> to be able to show you guys what it looked like but I'm gonna go get a five gallon jug for that. It's chugging away. Looks like mostly water really. I was just thinking maybe we'll clean the tank out and try to reuse it, but it is just so nasty and sludgy down there. And also the, the uh, fuel pump is got a broken off nipple on the bottom of it. So I think we'll just go with, again, the, the auxiliary tank method, even though there's really nowhere to put it. What are you gonna strap it up on top of the seat? It's not gonna happen today though. It's starting to get stormy looking out too. The cable and throttle works. With the cable seized up. And rusted. See if we got something in the old cable drawer that I never use. Well, let's keep old cables in case though. I got two motorcycle throttle cables. I don't know if they're gonna be long enough though. This one's pretty darn long. No, that's not even gonna be close. We're hooked to art. Oh, oh no, 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 here, the fiberglass like, is inside the wood right here. Well, I forget where we left off, but I was able to get a throttle cable designed for a go-car. It's long enough. Got her all rigged up with the battery from the Africa Twin, some auxiliary fuel, and we're gonna take her down the river and see what happens. Looking good on the trailer, though. It's looking promising is what it's looking like. It's a hell of a machine. Let's go. <laughs> I don't, I saw it. Go 
go, go. go. <laughs> you got it's it? It's the worst. It's the worst machine in the world. That's why they didn't sell well. Get it forward, get ahead of it. I can't believe that. And now the fun begins. Floating partially submerged in the water, the wet bike leaps to the surface with a twist of the throttle. we go from here I mean that was an absolute blast ride this out on the river I don't know if you guys captured all the fun I was having but no really it was terrible that was a horrible experience and something I've learned is that if you're gonna take a wet bike out it's a pretty hard machine to get up on and to ride so you better have her in tip-top shape you can't have the, the gas tank strapped up here and a throttle that, that barely works and sticks a little bit it's just it's not a very great machine and i can see why they stopped making these i mean a stand-up jet ski like the super jet i got over here that is an absolute blast to ride such a great machine takes a little skill i'm gonna say this takes more skill to ride and unfortunately i've decided to throw in the towel on this one now so i'm, I'm selling these two machines as a pair i put them up on facebook and have a guy coming down from connecticut driving three and a half hours to pick these up for a thousand bucks and you know I hate to be the guy that gives up or throws in the towel I mean will it run yes we got it running but will it ride no not without a bunch more work and unfortunately no title for the wet bike and the the jet star uh the guy gave me the run around on that too he said oh yeah I'll apply for a title and then then he kind of stopped answering my calls and text messages so I figured you know I'll just sell these to somebody who can use them for parts which the guy coming down I said he has a wet bike. They always need parts for these. You can't really get them anymore. Like really, if I parted this out on eBay, I could probably get a lot more, but I'm happy to see these go to, to a good owner who's gonna appreciate them. He always wanted a Jetstar, he doesn't have one. This will be, I think, a fun unit for him to try out. And where am I going with this? I mean, basically, if I uh, did have a title, maybe I'd go further, but if I went any further with this, it would be pretty much just for you guys because I have no desire to ride a wet bike again. I'll stick to the three-seater and the stand-up. Uh, so that was a, a fun experience. And other than that, thank you very much for tuning into the video like usual. Hope to see you in another one. <laughs> what are you doing? You got the zoomies? <laughs> Check it out guys, I was looking earlier and first two eggs ever from our chickens. Uh, these will be the two most expensive eggs ever and hopefully these six all start laying and we'll have steady eggs coming soon. Gus, come on. He probably just follows them around, waits for him to poop. It's like uh, ice cream for him. Gus, what's this though? What's that? Hey, 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 you cracked those, mom's gonna be very upset. You can sniff, but don't bite. Hey, you like that, huh? That's even better than your your uh, chicken ice cream, huh? You dummy. That's a dumb dumb. that's it wet bike in the back of the pickup the uh the jet star off to a new new home we 
What do you think, man? What are you gonna do with these? I'm stoked. Get them running, get them on the river. I'm gonna rip. Heck For yeah. Sure. Thanks, well, man. Hey, better you than me. Maybe, maybe I'll get up there, uh, try this thing out if you get it on the water. So, best of luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate uh, it. Hey. Thank you. All right, man. Drive safe. Thank you. All right guys, so you know at the end of videos, I always like to kind of update the, the fate of machines. And so this one sold on eBay for 1,200 bucks to a guy up in New York who likes to collect these. How many machines you said your buddy has? Got about 100. 100 machines, and he's gonna refurbish this thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's really cool. And uh, this is Bobby. Hi, how you doing? This is the, the transport. There's an old saying, uh, my grandfather's from Italy when I was young, driving a car. He said, listen, if you go slow, you're sure to go. If you go too fast, you're not gonna last. So that goes with everything, construction, equipment, like, uh, you know, uh, he's the, you, what's your we, name? We had a little, Chris, Chris we, we had a little trouble it. today getting yeah. this thing on That's here. how you learn, though. Yeah. You know, as long as you take it easy and you'll be okay. Yeah, so Bobby was super cool because I was about 10 minutes Ooh. late or so. That's all right. And, and <laughs> you know, this guy's up bright and early. He came from three, four hours away and beat me here. But uh, you know, this machine is only turning one way and it was kind of losing power too. We ran out of fuel, so didn't get that on video, but uh, probably took us a good hour to get him on, on his uh, his trailer here, his low boy, which, you know, it's, it's a good old girl. So anyway, uh, do you have a, uh, I'm just really stoked to see this thing go off to a good home. And uh, hey, if you guys got any other equipment like this sitting around in your yard and you know, you're within, I don't know, four or five hours of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, that's kind of where I'm near. Let me know, shoot me an email or Instagram, Facebook. I always like tinkering with this stuff and, and getting it to a new home. Yeah, cause, cause otherwise you got George over here who's gonna cut the machine off with a hey, right. oxyacetylene torch. torch. So, hey, if you got, what's your business name again? This is Welding and Repairs. Yeah, what, what Machinery kind of? repair, fabrication. Cool, so if you guys are near Chesterfield, New Jersey, check him out. There it is, George Mason, Welding and Repair. He's a quick shop tour. He's got going on. He kind of works on a little bit of everything. And I've heard a lot of good feedback off a few of my friends that, that do work with him. So there's his rates. So this low boy is a little bit different than the last one we had over uh, picking up the Cat 977. You see it's got a ram that comes, comes down and pushes on the ground. And then once it gets high enough, I guess these just, these fold down, right? This is, I guess, just, uh, like you said, a little bit old school. There's the one downside is there's no real adjustability with it, though. And then that ram gets pulled back up in. These desert guys are lucky enough to deal with this kind of stuff. Unbelievable, the rust they get upstate New York. It's even worse than here. 